Hello, big team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth, and it is time to do my April wrap-up. I had a fantastic reading month in April. Of course, everyone has been sequestered at home because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and, you know, a lot of things that we normally would be doing at this time of year, like end-of-the-year school stuff and all of that, hasn't been happening so I have been managing to get quite a bit of reading done a lot of it still on audio because I've also been managing to get a good bit of housework done a lot of spring cleaning going through stuff all of that I still have a lot to do I am slow but I'm excited about the progress that I've made I'm going to continue this month to try to finish getting through all the things at my house that need to be gone through and at some point hopefully someday we'll have that yard sale that has been continually postponed so anyway through it all I did get a lot of reading done I finished a total of 38 books for the month of April, which is even better than my March total of 35. And I thought I would give you a few stats. Now, I did do a mid-month wrap-up, and then in the middle of the second half of April, we had the Amish in April readathon, and I did a wrap-up for that. So I won't go into much detail, at least I'm going to try not to ramble too much, about the books that I read in the first half of the month of April and the Amish books. I will just briefly go over the titles. I'll list them down below in the description. If you want to chat about any of those, then just, you know, write me a comment in the in the comments of this video and we'll chat about whatever book you want to chat about regardless of when I talked about it. But feel free to go back and watch that first half of April if you're interested in anything that I mentioned and also the Amish in April videos that I did as well. So just a quick summary of everything. I finished a total of 38 books so 28 of them were on audio and that leaves 10 of them to be in print and of that 10 that I read in print two of them I read on ebook on my Kindle and so I was glad to get the Kindle back out again and do a little bit of ebook reading. And in fact, I have started an ebook for the next few days as well. I, I like to read on it sometimes. I don't get in the mood often to pick it up. I don't know, for some reason, it's just hard to get started on a Kindle book. And I don't know why, because it's easy to read on it and it's, you know, I don't even have to worry about holding a heavy book or anything, but I don't know, for whatever reason, uh, I don't end up reading a lot on my Kindle, but I did read two books this past month. So of the books, the 38 books, let me just kind of go over the genres. Four of them were nonfiction. I think at least three of the nonfiction were essay type books or stories, and then one was a memoir. And of the rest of the books, five of them were historical fiction, and eight of them were cozy mysteries. Then five of them were mystery thrillers. So four of them were really more thrillers, and then the other one was just a, a detective story, not a cozy. And then I read three middle grade books, and then I read 12 Amish books. Eleven of those 12 were on, oh no, 10 of the 12 were on audio. One was an ebook, and one was in print of those 12 Amish books. So let's just go over them quickly. I think I'm going to break this down into groups or genres or categories because I think that makes more sense for you watching and then you can skip around to what you want to watch if you want to skip around. So I will put in the description the timestamps of where each category starts. So let's knock a few of the small ones out of the way first. Um, let me just mention middle grade because right now is May and I have been participating in middle grade May for I guess this is my fifth year participating. This is the sixth year of it. It's really small scale this year, and ACOS did do an announcement just uh, a few days ago, and I will link that in the description below. Sometimes she will request that for a challenge we pull out quotes from what we're reading, but she said she's not even doing that this year. She is planning to do some Instagram challenges. I haven't seen those yet, but I will leave a link below to her YouTube channel and her Instagram and 
just you know keep an eye out for those to see what um, what's going on in, in in respects to middle grade May. So she's not having any co-hosts this year. I have co-hosted previously, but I just like to help out, like to spread the word, and because. You know, in more recent years, the bigger middle grade readathon has turned out to be middle grade March, but March is my mystery month. So I do read a few middle grade books in the month of March, but I try to keep it to middle grade mysteries. And then May is my big month to read middle grade books. So that being said, I'm reading a lot of middle grade books this month. I kind of started out the month finishing up some things from April and even March, but the majority of what I'm going to read in May is middle grade, but I did read three books. So let me show you first the three middle grade or children's books that I read during the month of April. One of them is really more of an elementary book, not really middle grade, but I read it because of Amish in April. One of the Amish authors that I enjoy reading, really my favorite Amish author is Beverly Lewis, and I discovered that she has several children's book series. And I was able to get a couple of one series from the library. And the series is called The Cul-de-Sac Kids. And this is book five called Frog Power. It's really cute. I enjoyed it a lot. And I have another one checked out from this same series that I will be reading this month in May. But this is just about a group of kids who all live in this one cul-de-sac. They walk to school together. Most of them are in third grade. Some of, of them, I think, are in first grade. Some of the siblings. And they uh, have adventures. So they're Christian books. They are very enjoyable. And I am really excited to learn about them. Ongoing this year, I've been trying to read one each a month of the series of unfortunate events. So for April, I read The Austere Academy. This is book five, and in this book, the children, the Baudelaire orphans, go to a boarding school. And I'm happy to say at least one positive thing came out of this book. They made some friends, some other friends who are also orphans. It's still kind of a depressing story. A lot of not so good things happen, but I am interested to continue with the series, and I'm reading one a month just to finish the series by the end of the year. And the Newbery book that I read for the month of April is called It's Like This Cat by Emily Novell. And this was very good. It was a kind of a coming of age story about a young boy. And the cat is kind of the catalyst that takes him through these different adventures and things that happened to him throughout the book. I thought it was very good. This is the Newbery winner from the year I was born, 1964. It was published in 1963. I found the audio for this on Scribd. Okay, so let's go into the nonfiction that I read. I read four different nonfiction books. All were in print except one was on audio. I think I said earlier that three of them were essay type books or stories and one was a memoir, but actually only two of them were essays. One was history and the other was a memoir. So one of the books that was an essay is one that I already talked about earlier in the month. It's by Carl Hyacin called Assume the Worst, the graduation speech you'll never hear. And it, it's probably better that you don't hear it. <laughs> it was... Um, entertaining to a point but too much foul language and very cynical so I did not particularly enjoy that one but the other book of essays that I read I did enjoy it's called The Sewing Room it is by Barbara Cawthorn Crafton Barbara Crafton is an Episcopal priest and she talks a lot about her ministry her ministry seems to really involve a lot of helping people she works with urban relief. She has a lot of projects going with homeless people and things like that and she does a lot of that type of work. So a lot of her stories mention that. I don't necessarily agree with all of her theology. In fact there was one essay near the back that bothered me and I talked a little bit about this in my review because there was a man who was on his deathbed and there was another Christian woman who was ministering to him and encouraging him to get right with God. You know, she wanted uh, him to think about sins that he would committed, things like that, and wanted him to r repent and, uh, and think about, you know, moving forward on into death. And I agreed with that. And Reverend Cawthorn did not agree, which I thought was very 
contrary to what a minister should be doing because really if you are not right with God and you are dying when else are you gonna get right so that perspective I thought was very interesting now maybe she was just trying not to be judgmental and she felt like the other Christian woman was being judgmental but honestly I think as a Christian we need to not try to stop people from making their peace with God and doing what they need to do to get ready for eternity and I disagreed with her outlook on that situation so that was really the only thing that bothered me that was right near the end of the book I did for the most part really enjoy the book and the stories and I would recommend this book the reason it's called the sewing room is because she starts out the book with a story about sewing and how her grandmother taught her to sew and some of the projects that she did when her children were younger and the things she sewed and how in later life she hasn't had time to do the things that you know she used to do when she was younger that type of thing so the whole book is not centered around sewing or sewing rooms that just happens to be one of the early essays in the book and then the history book that I read for book club is the radium girls by Kate Moore I did enjoy this although it was a tough read I listened to this on audio I don't think I could have really gotten through it in print I listened to it on hoopla I believe and it was a tough story but I think an important thing for us to learn about especially in light of the fact that I still think there possibly are things going on today that we're using and ingesting that we are perhaps going to learn a few years into the future that we should have paid more attention and not consumed those items and I just think it is something to really make you think about that whole situation you know and you look at this and you think how could they not have known well like I said I think there's probably things today that we are using that we're going to find out we shouldn't be so you know we live and learn but I think it's a very important concept to think about and it is a very sad part of history overall I think it was a good topic and a very interesting book then on my Kindle I read an ebook by comedian Matthew McCreary and it's called funny you don't look autistic and this is written from a young man's perspective as a person who has autism or is on the autism spectrum he considers himself an Aspie which is known as Asperger's syndrome which I think now the official name of that has changed but anyway he is only in his 20s I think and so some of the reviews I read questioned whether he should be writing a memoir as a 20 something year old but I disagree I enjoyed the book since I have a daughter with autism who is really not able to explain to me what she's going through and what she's feeling I think it was really interesting for me to read something from a person who has autism I also really enjoy reading things um, by Temple Grandin who is of course a very famous person with autism and of course both this young man and Temple Grandin are much higher functioning than my own daughter I still think it's a very interesting perspective to read from and to listen to so I enjoyed the book he is approaching it from a comedian's perspective he always wanted to make people laugh and so now he has found that niche in the autism world and so I thought it was a very entertaining book and it wasn't very long and I would definitely recommend it I found this because it was a big library read on overdrive I think overdrive sponsors this every year where they pick one book and as many people as want to can read it and check it out at the same time so you're you don't have to wait for it and so I checked it out and only had I think until April 29th so I kind of put it off to the last minute and did manage to get it read in the last few days before it was going to expire and I'm really glad that I did 
Okay, so I finished a series during the month of April. It was the Jane Whitefield series by Thomas Perry. I'm going to have to show you pictures of the last three books that I read. I really, really loved this series. I've talked about it before. I did read the fifth book in the series for March Mystery Madness. The first three books, I think I actually listened to the third book several years ago. It came through on Play Away. It was donated to our friends of the library and I just wanted to test it and make sure that it worked before putting it out for sale and I listened to it and I loved it. So I eventually went back and read the first book. I think I read it in print and the second book and then I kind of just forgot about the series for a little while until I discovered not too long ago that most of the series was on Hoopla on audio. So I picked up book four I think in February and I listened to that and then book five in March and then I decided just to go ahead and burn through the rest of the series because I was enjoying it so much. And honestly if all of them are still on Hoopla I may listen to them again. It's definitely a series that I really really enjoyed and I have encouraged my husband to pick up the series and I would encourage you as well. It's about a young woman who is a guide. She is half Native American from the Seneca tribe in New York and she guides people who are in trouble or in danger to get them out of danger and she is amazing and I just think it is such an interesting concept. They're not really mysteries although we do end up seeing mysteries and crimes played out and solved and resolved throughout each book and I just think they're fantastic. So the books that I listened to, uh, book six is called Runner, book seven is called Poison Flower, and then book eight is called A String of Beads. And I hope there's going to be more of these. I don't think one's been written for a while, but I really hope this is a series that the author has not decided to finish because it's fantastic. Then the other thriller type book that I listened to is one that I had wanted to get to during March. I ordered this book on Playaway from my library and I didn't get it until near the end of the month and I just didn't have time to squeeze it in. It's The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. I picked this up originally because Laura from Mom to Triplets 04 was doing this as a read-along for March Mystery Madness. I think I heard her say in her wrap-up that she really enjoyed it. I did not find it very enjoyable and I think it's because this type of book, this more modern thriller, is just a little too dark for me. There's a lot of foul language and there's just a lot of, I don't know, it's just, there's just a lot of stuff that I don't like in this type of book. Now I know this is a really popular book and you have probably seen a lot of good reviews of this. I had previously heard a pretty negative review from Rebecca who is the book nester. I might uh, also link Rebecca's review down below because I think she brings up a lot of good points about the book. Now for me personally I didn't really think about all of the issues that she brought up. For me I think it was just too dark and too heavy for what I really needed at that point because I had just come out of reading two other thriller type books in the month of March. I listened to The Lion Game by Ruth Ware for my own read along. That was a book club book and also The Girl Before by J.P. Delaney which was a book club book for our regular book club at my public library. So I had had to listen to both of those in March and then I listened to this in early April and I think I just was kind of over it <laughs> as far as these heavier, darker kind of thrillers. I didn't really enjoy any of them. You guys know I don't like foul language and there's a lot of that. There's just a lot of graphic content in most of these. This one I can't think if there was a lot of graphic content. It just was too dark for my taste. I'm more of a cozy mystery reader. But I wanted to read this because Laura was doing it as a read-along for March Mystery Madness and I wanted to support that. So even though I didn't get it done in the month of March, I did get it done in early April and so I'm glad that I did. But I wasn't a big fan of it even though it's a very popular book. A lot of people love it and we'll just leave it at that. 
Then the other mystery thriller type book that I read was not really a thriller, but not a cozy mystery, just more of a detective story, although it's not really about a detective, it's about a sheriff. <laughs> Let me just show you the book. It's book two in the Longmire series by Craig Johnson. This is called Death Without Company. My husband read this in March and I found it on Scribd along with several others from the series. In fact, I listened to the first book, I think in March or maybe it was February, I don't remember, and I liked it okay and the same for this one. I think I liked this one a little bit better than the first one maybe. But I still maintain that the TV series is better. It's more to my taste. Part of the problem is the character of Vic. I like her TV version better than this book version. The book version has just got a foul mouth. I mean, a lot of people would probably think that's funny and entertaining, but it doesn't entertain me. I don't like to hear people using a lot of foul language. Not a fan of Vic in the book. But Longmire is pretty much the same in book and on screen. I probably will continue the series, but the book series is not as much to my liking as the TV series. After Amish in April, right near the end of the month, I listened to a dystopian book. Now, Katie is the one that asked me to check this out from the library because she had to read Handmaid's Tale for school, and so she thought she would go ahead and read Testaments by Margaret Atwood, but then once she got it and looked at it, she kind of lost interest in it. Meanwhile, I read Handmaid's Tale years ago and really loved it, so I thought I would like to read it, so I found it on audio on RB Digital. And while we had the print copy checked out, I thought it would be a good time to go ahead and listen to it. I thought I might want to go back and listen to Handmaid's Tale again or read it again, but I didn't have time and I really remembered enough of the details of Handmaid's Tale to just go on into this and it was totally fine. I, in fact, I really don't think you would have to have read Handmaid's Tale to read this, although I think you probably should. This kind of starts out not long after Handmaid's Tale, but then the majority of the book takes place 15 or 16 years after Handmaid's Tale, and I thought it was very, very good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really do love a good dystopian, and I like this one a lot. And one thing I'll have to say about it is that most of this book was written without any foul language at all. Right near the end, there is a little bit, and it sort of comes out in the characterization of one of the main characters so I can kind of see why it's in there but I really think that it shows a lot of class on Margaret Atwood's part to be able to write a story like this in modern day and make it a really good story without having to resort to a lot of foul language so I appreciated that about the book and I just thought it was great so I read five historical books during the month of April. The historical fiction that I read, I really enjoyed. In fact, I would have to say that my favorite books for April were historical fiction. One of my favorite books that I read during the month was a buddy read with my sister called A Hearth in Candlewood by Delia Parr. This is set in New York in 1841 and it's about a woman who's widowed and she runs an inn. And I thoroughly love this book. It is a Christian fiction historical book and it's the first in a trilogy. So we both very much enjoyed it. Uh, it was just such an entertaining book. There were just a lot of things that kept happening. It was so interesting and so entertaining. In fact, in the first several chapters, there was something new, some sort of new conflict came up and, you know, that would have to be resolved and continued to be resolved throughout the book. I just thought it was really very well written and very entertaining and it was a joy to read and I read through it a lot faster than I thought I would. The first book of the month that I read was called The Secrets We Kept by Laura Prescott. We are supposed to read this for book club later on in the year and while I still had my Audible membership, I went ahead and picked it up and listened to it and I did not enjoy it and so I returned it. I talked about it in my mid-month wrap up so I don't want to go into details about it but I just wasn't a big fan of it. And then speaking of Audible, I'm still trying to do the Audible category challenge. For the month of April, I had chosen Gothic and Royal 
for the two categories that I was going to read, and I only got one of them done. I believe this one was for Royal. This is by Georgette Hare, called The Convenient Marriage, and this was okay. It was cute. I had not read any Georgette Hare. I know that she is well-beloved and has kind of a comical, humorous spin on her stories, and I like this okay. I was trying to get through it kind of quickly, and I kind of lost interest in the middle, and I didn't really go back and listen to what I didn't really understand. I just kind of kept powering through, and when I got to the end, it did wrap up nicely, and it was cute. It was a romance. Uh, I definitely do want to try more books by Georgia Hare. I think from reading some of the reviews, this is maybe not a favorite of hers. There are others that are probably more popular, but it was okay, and it was fast. It was only like a five-hour audiobook, and so it met that challenge for me, and I'm glad that I finally have read a Georgette Hare novel. The other one I chose was Gothic, and I chose Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen, which I listened to in the beginning of May, so I will talk about that more when I do a May wrap-up. Now, my favorite book for the month was also historical. It was written, not really epistolary, but it was written as diary entries, and it's called These Is My Words by Nancy Turner. It is the diary of Sarah Agnes Prine. I think it is fictitious, although it may be based loosely on the author's research and family history, but I think I've read somewhere that it's really mostly just made up. I could be wrong. I buddy read this with Donna from Paradonna Palimpsest. Donna, please comment below if this is based on fact or if it's just loosely based on people who were, in fact, real people or, or what. So uh, anyway, uh, we both really, really enjoyed this story. She said that this has now become a new favorite of hers. She is from the area of the country where this is set, which is Arizona, and it is set back in the 1800s. It is fantastic. I knew that it was going to be good, but I didn't know it was going to be this good. It's the start of a trilogy. I'm so excited to read the rest of the series. This book was just amazing. I cannot express to you how much I enjoyed it. It is written in diary entries. Like I said, it starts out with her as a young woman, like a teenager, and it goes on through her life, uh, maybe to about middle age, and it's, I, I don't even want to spoil it, and I can't even remember a lot of the details. I just know that it's fantastic. I first heard about it from Ann Bogle on her podcast, What Should I Read Next? I have heard her recommend it to people more than once. So, you know, if Ann Bogle recommends something, you should think about it twice. You know, don't just dismiss it because she does have some really good recommendations. And I thought this was a fantastic book. And so I would recommend it to all of you. It is definitely going to be in my top five books for the year. And I loved it. Then the other book that I read that is historical is actually a classic, and I think this was my third time through this book. The first time when I was a kid, I probably read an abridged version, and then I listened to it on audio maybe within the last 10 years, but I picked up Little Women, and the reason I decided to listen to it in April is because my daughter Katie was reading it for the first time. Now, this is her edition. She got this in, uh, you, you may recognize this edition because there was a really pretty boxed set of classics that was released just a few years ago, and my husband's mother gave these to Katie for Christmas one year, and she didn't think she would ever read them, but after school was out and we were home, she was doing a lot of cleaning, she ran across this box set again, and I reminded her that I had bribed her with money to read these at, at one point, and I told her I would, I would still do that, uh, and so she decided to pick this up. She got into reading this, and it only took her a few days. She kind of got into a good habit of going outside and reading several chapters every morning. My husband had been doing a lot of yard work and made our backyard just very pleasant. We, we have a really good backyard, but we had not done a lot of landscaping, so my husband has been working on that and just making our backyard a very pleasant place to sit. So 
we have all taken turns going outside and sitting and reading. So Katie decided to read this, and I think that if I can talk her into it, we're going to do a video about Little Women. Because after she finished it, we went and checked out from the Red Box the newest Little Women movie and watched that. Then I eventually finished my audio version. We also have copies of the two movie adaptations prior to that, which I have not watched in a long time. Well, I don't know if I've ever watched this Katherine Hepburn Elizabeth Taylor version, but I found this in my videos, and I think I picked this up at a book sale somewhere uh, a couple of years ago. But we are going to watch all the all three of the adaptations that we have. We've already watched the newest one, and then hopefully, if I can twist Katie's arm enough, we will do a video where we talk about the book versus the movies that we've watched. But um, I am so glad that Katie finally read this, and we will talk about it more later, I hope. And while I'm talking about Katie, she not only finished Little Women, she also finished a total of five books in the month of April and has already finished a couple of books in May. It, this has just been a really positive experience for our family because we've had more time at home to do some of these things that we just didn't have time to do before. She is finishing up her junior year in high school, and ever since she started ninth grade, she has just not really had time to read, and it just kind of got in a reading slump. So she also read The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. Another book she wanted to read and add to the yard sale pile once she read it is Paper Towns by John Green. In fact, both of these books we got at thrift stores, and when she was cleaning out her room, she thought she would just get both of these read and then pass them on. Then we were able to get a couple of library books for her. She read You Asked for Perfect by Laura Silverman. I don't know anything about this one. And then one that's kind of been on my radar is The Program by Suzanne Young. And since she read this one, we've been able to get several of the others from this series, and I think she's already finished book two in this series in the month of May. Okay, so let's talk about the cozy mysteries that I read in April. I listened to most of them on audio, and most of these are books that I had wanted to get to in the month of March for March Mystery Madness, and just couldn't get to everything. So let's go through them quickly. I finished the last book in the Cat Who series, The Cat Who Had 60 Whiskers. I mentioned this already in my first half of the month wrap up and it's too bad that it ended like it did because the series overall is fantastic but this particular book I did not enjoy. So now I have read all of the Cat Who books including the three books of short stories and I can check that series off my list. Another series that I continue to check off my list because I've been reading it for several years Primarily, I've listened to these on audio. The newest one came out at the end of February, and I was able to get this from the library in the mail right after everything closed up. I also got a CD copy, which I listened to. This is The Coconut Layer Cake Murder by Joanne Fluke. This is the latest book in this series, The Hannah Swenson Baking Mysteries, and I am completely caught up now with all of the series. I have really enjoyed the series overall. I think I'm getting a little bit tired of it. I will continue to read it for as long as she continues to publish them, but I feel like that the farther I go with it, the more elementary it starts to get. And maybe it's been like that all along, and it's just that I'm so familiar with all the characters that I don't need the explanations. But you know, if you read a series for so long, you start to really see the repetition that's involved. But I can see why it's necessary, because so many people will pick up a book in the middle of a series and they need to know some of the backstory. Maybe not everything, but at least enough to kind of get a feel for the characters. So the author has to continually rehash all of these things that regular readers already know. And when I get to this point, really before this point in the series, I start to get a little worn out with the repetition. But, as I said, I can overlook that because I know that it's necessary. But there's still a few things in here that I think could have been left out. Anyway, there's just some parts where there's just too much explanation, I think. And so that kind of bothered me a little bit. I'm of the school that I think you should give the reader a little bit of credit for being able to know some things ahead of time and being able to figure out some things on your own. So, 
anyway, that's just where I am with that. But overall, I enjoyed the book. We have kind of gone through a sort of a dark period with the series, and now we're kind of starting to see the light again, I think. And uh, I enjoyed it. Another audiobook that I listened to that I think I talked about earlier in the month is Scandal in Skybarine by Sheila Connolly. This is book two in the County Cork series. It is the sequel to Buried in a Bog, which I listened to in February. And so I had hoped to get to this one in March because it's set in Ireland, but it didn't happen. But I am glad that I finished it. I still think that the narrator is making the character sound kind of rude. Not quite so much in this book, but it's kind of funny because there was another character in the book that the main character thought was rude. And she kept pointing out the fact that this other person was being rude. And I kept thinking, but it's kind of rude for you to point out that this other person is rude, isn't it? So, I don't know. I mean, she would just say it to her face. So, I don't know. It was kind of interesting. But I, I may continue with the series. I have started at least one other series by Sheila Connolly. It's the Victorian Village series. I think that there's... Um, I, I think I noticed that the second or third book is out for that series, so I want to continue with that. But she's got an Apple Orchard series that I think looks really interesting that I want to try. So let me know if you've read anything by Sheila Connolly and what you thought about it. I have heard from several people who have read the County Cork series in print that if you just read them in print that the main character doesn't sound rude. That's why I think it really is just the way that the narrator is reading her. Incidentally, the narrator of this series is Amy Rubinate, and she also narrated These Is My Words, and I loved that book. Now, I still could see some things in her narration that I wasn't a fan of, but I also had the ebook version on Scribd, and I was reading some of it along with listening to it, so I think that enhanced my experience of These Is My Words. I don't think that Amy Rubinate is a narrator that I'm gonna really just be a big fan of but I think she did a good job with these is my words and for this series it's okay it's just the, the attitude she gives the main character just doesn't come across as completely positive in print I finally read a book that I was supposed to have read for my stackmas tree <laughs> this is a Christmas themed book called Homespun Holidays. It's book five in the Patchwork Mystery series. Finally got it read in April. I don't know why it takes me so long to get each one of these books read. This one's by Kellyanne Riley. The whole series is written by various authors. It's a guidepost cozy mystery series and I love this book. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Now it is a Christmas themed book. In the book they are planning a holiday tour of historic homes and so the person who is supposed to be planning some of this is a boarder at the main character's home and she disappears before this alt is supposed to take place. So our main character who is a quilt restorer and also an amateur sleuth has to try to find her boarder and figure out if she's been kidnapped or if she's just gone off on her own on an adventure and this whole mystery is involved and it was fantastic. I thought it was a great book. I have loved every book in this series. There is not a single murder so far in the series. It is one of those mysteries where the authors are able to come up with some really interesting mysterious things but there's no murder and I love that. So the book is Homespun Holiday by Kelly Ann Riley. I continued with a series on audio that I had started last year it is the Campers and Criminals, I think it's called the Campers and Criminals series by Tanya Kappas. The first book was Sarah's Read Along last year for March Mystery Madness. It was something like burglaries, bungalows, and something. I don't even remember. But, but I listened to books two and three of that series in the month of April. I didn't continue on because the next book is a Christmas themed book. So I'm going to try to hold off and listen to that one in December. But book two is called Deserts, Driving, and Derelicts, and book three is called Forests, Fishing, and Forgery. This is a series set in a campground, and I think it's in Tennessee, maybe. The main character, Mae West, starts out as a woman of a wealthy man who has been 
indicted for embezzlement and all of his property was seized. So in the first book, she finds out that the only things he had put in her name were a camper and a campground. So she basically goes there to live. In that first book, he turns up murdered there at the campground. And of course, she's accused of that and has to clear herself. So that's the first mystery. And then in the second book, a man who was one of her foster brothers from when she was growing up comes back to to see her. Now, there's not a romantic relationship there. He's more like a brother figure, but he is centered around the second mystery, and so she has to help clear him. And then in the third book, there's something else that happens. I don't even remember now the third one, but it's very light. It's definitely a cozy mystery, but it's set in a very unique setting because it is set in a campground and I just find it very entertaining. I absolutely love the covers of these. At this point I will have already shown you the covers of these two books. All of the covers feature a small camper or RV or something of that nature and they are really cute books and I definitely want to finish the series. So I saved these last two for the end of the Cozy Mystery section because I'm actually going to do a whole video about this series, but I'm happy to say that I have finished or caught up with another series, a Cozy Mystery series that I've been reading for quite some time. I read a lot of these in March for March Mystery Madness, but I was not able to get to the last two. Early in the month, I listened to book 17 in the Coffee House Mystery Series by Cleo Coyle. It's called Shot in the Dark. I listened to nine of these in the month of March. My goal was to get to 10 of them. This would have been the 10th one that I was going to listen to in the month of March. I didn't make it, but I did listen to it in early April. And then I decided to go ahead and see if I could get this from the library. I could not get this on audio. It's not on Hoopla, and I don't even know if it's on Audible, but I read it in print. For the first time, I have read one of these books in print. This is Brood Awakening. This is the most recent in the series. It's book 18. And I was afraid that because I had listened to all the others on audio that I would have a hard time getting through this in print. And that was not true at all. I didn't start this until the, after Amish in April was over. I had four days to read this before the end of the month and I think I read it in three. I think I started this on April 28th and I had it finished by April 30th. This was really good and I love the fact that there are really short chapters so you can start and stop almost anywhere in the book and it was very exciting. It was a page turner. And I really am excited that I got through this last book with such a bang. Now, I think that it's an ongoing series and it's going to continue, but I'm caught up now. So I think while I still have all of these checked out from the library, I'm going to go ahead and do a series review of this. I own a lot of them, but I sat down with them last night and I started refreshing myself on some of the earlier ones that I listened to several years ago. And I am going to go ahead and do a video of these before I have to return my library copies. So look for that in the very near future. Meanwhile, I am happy to say that I have caught up with this series. Now, before we go, I do want to show you briefly all of the Amish books that I read during the month. But before I do that, I want to also mention that I am happy to say that I have finished reading the Old Testament of the Bible for only the second time in my life. I started rereading the Bible at the beginning of my 20 by 20 challenge, and I said I was going to take three years to do it. So this is the third year, and I have finished the Old Testament. You guys know the New Testament is much shorter than the Old Testament, and so it takes a little bit longer to get through all of the Old Testament chapters, especially when you get involved in all of the laws and all of that stuff and the genealogies and the kings and the histories it can take some time to to sift through but i'm happy to say that i read the last few shorter books in the old testament in the month of april and finished the old testament another little book that i read in april and i've since read it again this is not on goodreads or anything although this author has some books that are on goodreads and now i'm really interested to read them we had a women's 
brunch right before all of this happened, uh, right before all the pandemic happened and everything started shutting down in early March. And our women's leader gave these out and I had it sitting there with my Bible and I finally read it and it's perfect for everything that's been going on, you know, in these troubled times as everyone's been calling them. It's called Crisis Survival Guide. It came out of a crisis in this man's family when his nine-year-old daughter had a virus that was attacking her heart and she was able to get an experimental heart that was temporary until she was able to get a heart transplant and then this little book came out of that so this is just a lot of biblical basic uh, things for facing a crisis and getting through it and I, it was very very good the book that is about his daughter and her journey is called Grayson's Song and I'll try to find a picture of it and put it there they uh, have a, a foundation called Grayson's Heart Foundation and there is a web address Grayson.org so I'll put all that down below if you want to look up this author and I think at Grayson.org you can get a copy of this little book which I think is fantastic I'm interested in definitely in reading more books by him his name is Chris Denbeston and I, I thought this was very very good he lives in Florida which is also where I live and I don't know I can't remember how the woman from our church was able to get a stack of these but I'm so glad she did this has just been a really nice little book with a lot of encouragement for the times that we're living in right now in our world okay so let's end on an inspirational note I will show you quickly the books that I read or listened to during the Amish in April readathon and a day or so after. In print, I read a new release by Cindy Woodsmall and Erin Woodsmall called The English Daughter. And like I said, all of these books you can hear about in my Amish in April wrap up. Then I completed, I started and finished a series by Shelley Shepard Gray. It's The Amish Brides of Pinecraft. I listened to books one through four and then I read book 2.5 which is a novella so book one is the promise of Palm Grove book two is the proposal at Siesta Key book three is a wedding at the Orange Blossom Inn book four is a Christmas bride in Pinecraft and then book 2.5 that I read on ebook is a wish on Gardenia Street now all four of the main novels are available on audio on Hoopla and I think the ebooks are available on Hoopla as well and then on the Audible Escape package they have books two and three. Audible does have all four books but only books two and three are on the Audible Escape package. So I was able to listen to those on Audible Escape without having to use extra borrows and then I was able to borrow books one and four as well as the novella which was on ebook. So then on, um, on the Audible Escape package I finished the Heirloom series by Amy Clipston. I had listened to the first book last year, The Forgotten Recipe, so I did not listen to it again. I went straight on into book two which is The Courtship Basket. And then I listened to The Cherished Quilt and the last book, The Beloved Hope Chest. I also started a series that's new to me, The Storekeeper's Daughter by Wanda Brunstetter. And I started a series by Beverly Lewis that I had not read or listened to before. The first book is The Fiddler and I listened to it on Audible Escape. And the second book is The Bridesmaid, which I also listened to on Audible Escape. The other three books in that series are on ebook, on Hoopla, and I hope to get to those sometime in the near future. So that's it. I believe I covered all 38 books <laughs> that I read in the month of April. I'm sure this video is going to be long. I have probably got an hour of footage now. I've been standing here filming for a long time. I'm going to cut out all the rambling as much as I can and, uh, and hopefully leave you with just the basics. But that's all for this video. I really had a great reading month. I thoroughly enjoyed most everything that I read and the stuff I didn't enjoy. I'm still glad that I read it and or listened to it. But I did have some big favorites that came out of the month 
my favorite was These Is My Words by Nancy Turner. And I want to thank Donna for being such a wonderful supporter of my channel, always commenting and chatting with me. And uh, thank you, Donna, for buddy reading that with me. And we had talked about possibly inviting all of the rest of you to join us. But at the time that we kind of thought about that, I already had it checked out from Hoopla, and I wanted to listen to it while I still had it. And there just wasn't enough time for us to get an announcement out and have you all be able to get it because libraries are closed and all of that. So we just decided to go ahead and buddy read it on our own. But wholeheartedly, I think I can speak for Donna in that we would definitely recommend that you read it if you haven't already. And we will plan on definitely finishing the series. If others of you have read it and you want to chat about it and you haven't read the rest of the series and you want to join in with us when we pick up books two and three in the trilogy, please let me know. Let me know in the comments and we will definitely include you in our discussions. I can make some threads on my Goodreads group if you like and we can chat about it if more of you want to chat about it. So anyway, that's all I have for this video. I have already started off May with a bang and have already finished a couple of books that I had intended to read in April that I didn't get to. And then for the most of May, I'm going to be reading middle grade books. So I've got a couple of videos coming up soon that are still regarding mysteries. And then I've got a couple of videos coming up for middle grade May. So that's it for this video. I would love to hear from you in the comments. And let me know what you're reading right now this month or what you read last month or whatever you want to talk about. I love to chat with you. So that's all for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.